Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be making pesto alla Genovese, which is an authentic Italian pesto. It's like pesto you've never had before. That stuff you get in the shops, forget it. Crap. Not even made with olive oil. Rubbish. Now this is the only pesto you're ever going to want to eat. So there's a couple of options. Now you can use the pestle and mortar. Now really you'd use like a marble one, but being in a van we want um, as lightweight as possible. So I've got this really lightweight wooden one, which is great providing it doesn't break. Um, but also you can use a manual blender. Now I would strongly avoid using an electric blender. Reason being is it gets quite hot and it will nuke the basil. That basil is a really delicate leaf. So don't destroy it by using a hot blender. So manual blender, or the preferred way, using the pestle and mortar. So to start with, we just want to throw in three cloves of garlic, and then we're going to want to add a load of salt. So using the pestle and mortar, you want to mash that up. Remember, don't go chop, 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 don't do anything like that. Just give it a, a good twist, like so. Of course, if you are using the Xylus blender, you, you can just throw pretty much the whole thing into one pot and give that a good mash in that. I like the consistency that you get from the pestle and water. It's, it's a lot smoother, whereas the blender will be a bit more bitty. got a bit of a paste there. You want to add about a tablespoon of lovely pine nuts. Love pine nuts. Yeah, good tablespoons worth. Try not to spill them all over the floor. And then you grind them into the mix as well. So always using that circular motion. And then you'll end up with a nice paste, like so. Okay, so that is the point where you want to start adding your basil. Then you want a good handful, a big handful of basil. Now a little secret to using basil, the smaller the leaf, the sweeter the basil. So try and pick off all the smaller ones first and just drop them into the mix. Now, this is a well-used basil plant I've got here. I use basil for a lot of my recipes. But um, there's enough on here, but it will be the end of this plant. So then we want to just grind all of this into the mix. Now, this can take a little bit of time. Obviously, again, in the manual blender, one, 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 maybe 10 pulls, and you've got your chopped plants, but the pestle and mortar is smoother. It's just a much nicer, more pleasant type of pesto. See it all starting to come together. Starting to look, look like pesto as you know it. All of that around the edge, just make sure that all doesn't come flying out. Poke it back in. And you just want to keep going with that until that becomes a vibrant green paste. So now we're at a point where we need to add some Parmigiano cheese. You can use Pecorino. I like to, I like to use Parmigiano. So we are just going to simply grate a load of that into here. But I'm going to need to move that. Do you want to do about 60 grams of Parmigiano or Pecorino? I know what that is, but if you need to measure it, go ahead and measure. And then we just want to mix that back in. Grinds that all back up again. Okay, and it starts to get a lot thicker now, which is where we need, then need to bring in the uh, the olive oil. There's two main stars to this show, 
and really it's the basil and the olive oil. Now the better quality olive oil you use, the better the pesto is going to be, right? So don't scrimp out on olive oil, honestly. I've not long done a cooking class with Ursula Ferrigno and she introduced me to about five or six different types of olive oil and they were incredible. Each one so different and so unique and it just, honestly, we don't get much choice in the supermarkets. So just buy the best one you can in the supermarket. It is worth it. Pesto, jarred pesto that you might purchase in the stores is usually used with like sunflower oil and yeah no not good at all this is why this is so different good sweet basil leaves nice cheese quality olive oil it is just the best type of pesto you can get so we only want to put in there a couple of glugs as i would say but really about two tablespoons to start with and then you just check your consistency after that There we have a beautiful, vibrant, creamy pesto. Pesto alla Genovese. The king of pestos. The only pesto you're ever gonna want to eat. That is where it's at. And have that running through your pasta. Or as I'm gonna do in the next video, I'm gonna be making fresh, Handmade gnocchi with some potato, flour, yum. Gonna try this. Honestly, like fresh pesto is one of the best flavors in the world. That took me about 10 minutes to make. You can easily make that. Pestle and mortar, TK Maxx for 10 pounds. And the ingredients are dirt cheap, a handful of basil, some garlic cloves, olive oil, some parmigiano reggiano, and there you have. And then you can jar that up, keep that in the fridge, that will last for a good couple of weeks. And honestly, that just stirred through anything will be the bomb. Everyone will love that, the kids will love that. It's so Moorish as well, I'm salivating again. I'm gonna have to make something. So never buy pesto from a jar ever again. Give it a go, make this, let me know how it comes out. I promise you there is no turning back. Don't forget to tune in next week because I'm gonna now be making a potato gnocchi, fresh gnocchi with the pesto sauce. You can't miss that one. See you next time.